Welcome back to another episode of the Everyday Joy Podcast. I'm your host, Ash Owen, and I cannot wait to find moments of joy with you today. I am so excited about all God is doing through our podcast. So why don't you jump on to the at Everyday Joy podcast? Instagram page. That way you can be up to date with all of the bits and pieces. You can be in the know with all the Q and A's, the questions we're asking, and you won't miss out on a single thing. I cannot wait to dive into the word of God with you today. Galatians 6, 9, the CEV version. Don't get tired of helping others. You will be rewarded when the time is right. If you don't, give up. I have the incredible Jenny back in the studio. With me. <laughs> oh, hello. Are you, wait, do you like to be called Jen or Jenny? What's your What's your go to? What's your Um, I don't mind both. Probably are Jen. you Are you Jenny on your birth certificate? Uh, that's a That's a story there. That's actually. a story. That's a story there. Okay. Shall we go into it? Yeah, go okay, for let's it. Let's go for it. If you want to, if you feel comfortable. <laughs> so on my birth certificate, at the moment it's Jenny, but before it was actually Johnny. Johnny. It was Johnny, so J-A-N-N-Y. And so mum named me Johnny. I, I don't remember where she got the inspiration from. Wait, stop. <laughs> <laughs> I love this because everyone is always like this when I I'm yeah. shook. <laughs> <laughs> well, actually, so the story when I became Jenny yeah. was my prep teacher. And she said, oh, Johnny's not a real name. It's supposed to be Jenny. So for ages, I didn't understand why I spelt my name J-A-E-N-N-Y. And I just thought, oh, why, why am I adding like different letters? It doesn't make, doesn't make sense. Mum finally told me my real name was Johnny, not Jenny. Wait, so you you went to school. Yes. Your teacher told you that you can't have your name. Yes. And so then she just started spelling your name Jenny. Yeah. And my mum changed it officially. <gasps> Mind blown, right? Mind blown. Whoa. <laughs> I don't even know how to deal with this. <laughs> It's, Would you ever go by your like name that your mum gave you, or is it just Jenny now? I think it's just Jenny. Just now. Jenny now. I'm just so used to Jenny. Yeah. Everyone says I look like a Johnny though. I kind of love the name Johnny. Thank I you. love the name Jenny too. But <laughs> wow, the more you know. When right. you said there's a story behind this, I thought you were just gonna like be like, you know, my name's actually Jennifer. <laughs> <laughs> no, your name is Johnny. That is maybe one of my favorite intro stories I've ever heard. Wow. Okay, so Jen, we're sticking with Jen. Jenny. Jenny. For now. So good. <laughs> oh, well, today we are looking at Galatians 6 verse 9. Don't get too tired of helping others. You will be rewarded when the time is right if you don't give up. Mm. What are your first thoughts about this, Jen? This is really, I, I love this verse. I feel like this is my mantra that I've always had mm. within my life. And it might actually come down to like my culture roots mm. of always helping someone else out, always putting someone else in front. Actually, it might be my mum. So I love this verse because I'm like, you know what? Yes, I have something that's literally got my name printed all over it. Mm. Yeah, you're like, this is an action. I can take ownership yes. of this. I can help and love people. Yeah. You know, I think that for me, my first thought is kind of in that second line where it says, you will be rewarded when the time is right if mm. you don't give up. I am I know for me, when you are living life so often thinking about others mm. and so often doing things for others and serving others, it can feel overwhelming. Mm-hmm. It can feel like a lot. But I think that what this verse is saying is, like, don't give up. You know, there is so much good and goodness in yeah. serving other people. And I think sometimes serving other people and doing things in the, you know, things that people don't see, things that maybe aren't going to be praised, that can be hard to keep going sometimes. Mm. But I think what this verse is saying, and, and ultimately what it tells us about God's character, is that he wants us to serve and love other mm-hmm. people no matter what. Yeah. Like, keep going. If yeah. you're not being recognized, if you're not being, you know, seen for those things, yeah. it should be a part of our character, a part yeah. of our habits to love and help others. And, you know, I'm probably guilty of, of getting in inverted commas tired of helping others at points and I think we've all been there where we go I just don't have time this week yeah I just can't I just don't have it in me oh I don't have the capacity for this yeah and I'm not saying go out and you know burn yourself out but 
when we can almost not make helping others an option it's That's almost true. like when we go okay well helping others is going to be just like if i'm brushing my teeth yeah this week i'm going to help other people yeah like that is where it kind of becomes habitual and in our character yeah. and and not so much a oh my goodness, I have to work up the energy to try and make this this thing happen. Yeah, it's just a really good mind frame change mm. of going, no, it's not I have to do this, it's I want to do this. Mm. It's my heart telling me, yes, let's go help someone else. And that's what I believe mum has instilled in, in me and also a lot of my family members is if you see something that's not done, let's go and do it. Mm. Even if, you do, if that person didn't ask you, or you're doing it behind closed doors, it's going to help that next person. And that's one skill I love having as a mum as well because if I never had that as a kid, I don't think I'll be like the way I am now as a mum that's always putting my daughter in front of me, always making sure that she's okay so that I can be okay as well. Um, and it's all part of looking after someone. Like It's like looking after a pet, like my cat Chino. That little girl, she's always in everything. She sounds like my daughter. Actually, they're both my daughters. That makes total Chelsea sense the way Chino. they are. Chelsea and Chino. Do chess, chess names? Do chess names? Do chess names? I think that's so great. It actually reminds me, I look after a bunch of young people at church. It's like oh. the greatest blessing. I love looking after them. I love being able to care for them and watch over them and, um, you know, Getting to walk alongside people in the highs and the lows Mm. is the greatest blessing. But I do have moments where I go, man, I'm so tired. I just want, I just want to go to bed. I just want to go to sleep. Or, but I think that when I kind of look at life, there's like, there's that saying that says, people remember you not for what you say, but for what you do. And. I guess for me, I have this real burden that I would be remembered and recognized for being someone that does and being someone that's reliable and being someone that can help others. And so I guess for me, that kind of puts like a burden on my heart to go, okay, well, how can I do this? How can I not get tired? And honestly, when I, when I hear this, one of the things that's helped me the most in helping others and this is like the most practical tip ever love being love prepared this. being yeah. prepared there is it is so difficult to help other people <laughs> when you feel like you're on the back foot 24 yeah. 7 and so for me something that i've done to try and not get tired of helping others mm-hmm. is to make it not necessarily easy but to make it doable and so something mm-hmm. that i started doing is um you know like for example, if someone has a baby, mm-hmm. it is so awesome to be able to go and like help make a meal. Yeah. But here's the thing. I don't always have time to make meals. Mm-hmm. When you work full time, when you Ooh. serve, when you do other things outside of hours, I often don't have time to do those things. But the option is either one, don't make them a meal, or I started finding places that make ready-made meals that they sell. Yeah. So there's so many cafes and Mm -hmm. restaurants who do like ready to go meals. Mm. And so what I do is I pay for one of them and I take it to them. So it's that thing of like, oh, I don't have to make it. Like I don't have to complicate it. I just need to do the action of taking it to them. So it's, yeah, I think that I know that sounds super practical and people listening Mm -hmm. probably are like, obviously ash that's what i already do (laughs) but for me i i was kind of like no ash you have to make it from scratch Mm. no you have to be there for hours and hours and hours and and what i realize is sometimes helping others it can have you know those time restraints if you go okay well i have 45 minutes you can go okay well i'm gonna drop in take a meal that i didn't hand make (laughs) doesn't mean you don't love them any less yeah but i'm gonna go drop off a meal that i didn't make but i i can bring to them and I'm going to talk for 15 minutes. I love that. Do you know what I mean? Sometimes I think we feel like, and I don't know if you've been through this, we have to go there, Mm -hmm. spend hours and hours and hours, do everything that we can, hand make the meal (laughs) because it doesn't mean we love them if we didn't hand make it. And we we get this burden. But I think ultimately we need to make it doable. Yeah. And we need to make it something that we can actually complete and do for someone and we're going to do that option a lot more than we're going to do the option where we feel like we have to spend hours and hours of time to try and help someone yeah as a mum 
from the other side, I would appreciate that. Just the easy meals, the easy drop-offs. That's all we wanted on the other side of it. So I really appreciated that you said that mm. because I'm very, very similar from the other side. I'm like, I need to find those easy things. If you can do one little thing for that someone who's in the deep, deep moments of their lives, whether it's all dark or they're going through a transition like being a mother or a transition into a new job where they just need that support, mm. just those little things. It doesn't have to take hours. It just takes one moment. The fact that someone else is thinking about you, that just warms my heart. Mm. And that's what I want to encourage our listeners right now. Take that little bit. If there's someone out there right now that you believe that needs a helping hand, you don't have to spend hours. They want you to think about them. They want you to pray for them. Drop by 10 minutes, drop a text, have a phone call, leave a voice message, send an Uber Eats to them. They're going to love it. Mm. I think today's episode has been so practical. I love this verse. Don't get tired helping others. You will be rewarded when the time is right if you don't give up. Now, I know you may not have the capacity to go and help people left, right and center. But out of today's episode, I hope that you've been able to hear a practical thing that you can do to help ensure that we don't get tired of loving others. I have a beautiful younger cousin and she said this thing to me that literally blew my mind. She said, I want to love people and help people who don't know Jesus just as much as I help the people that do. So when you get this verse, this isn't just talking about the people in your sphere, in your church, in your family. If you have a co-worker that doesn't know Jesus, help them. If you have a family member that's far from Jesus, help them. This can be... Practical things can often be the greatest way to show people the love of Jesus. I cannot wait to talk even more with you tomorrow, but until then, I pray you're able to find moments of joy.